Hey Florence First Family, here we are worshiping together just as promised. I know it's going to be a little bit unusual, but why don't you push yourself tonight and let's let's try to enter into an atmosphere of worship right in your home. You know, it's great for you to have this time for you to just take your family together and, and just emphasize the importance of worshiping together as a family. So the thing is, is that we're all tied together. We may not be in the same room physically, but we're all tied together right now through this great uh, opportunity that we have to live stream to you. So right now, I want us to open up in prayer. I want us to set our hearts in motion and Think on the things that God would have us to think on. Prepare our heart for the word that's about to come. We're about to start a couple of songs of worship. We want you to enter into worship today with us. But right now, let's pray. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your family. I want to pray for, of course, the, the nation right now and the world. But, but let's just pray and ask the Lord to just set our hearts in tune with him as we're about to receive the word of God, okay? Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this great day that you've given to us. Thank you for an opportunity that even when the world shuts down, you never shut down. And God, that you're in complete control. We love you. We pray for our world right now. We pray, God, for those that are living in fear and panic. Lord, that they'll understand life like we do, to know that they can have a peace that passes the understanding. They can live in that peace just like we do, God, with you. We love you, Lord, and we ask you to just bless this time of worship as we set aside some time just to exalt your name and to thank you for our help. Thank you, God, that we're not infected. And we pray for those that are, Lord, that they would heal quickly and that all of this would resolve very soon so that we can be back together again. Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be back in just a second, right after this time of worship. And we're going to get into God's word. Let's worship him together. All right, put your hands together. Shall be. 
what a great time of worship. Um, I love that song, the, the last one we did. And of course, I love to worship God. That's who I am. I'm, I'm really not a performer at all. I like to play music and I like to sing, but, but I'm really a worshiper at heart. And those songs just touch my life and I know it has you too. You know, worship just gets us ready for the Word of God and that's what we're going to do right now. So I want to share a word with you that God has been laying in my heart for the last few days. And I feel like the Lord is telling me that with all the fear that's going on in the world right now, that there's a lot of talk about fear. And, and that's really not what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about everything that we got to get ready for and all that. There's plenty of talk like that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a fresh word from God just that He lays in my heart. And I know this is for somebody, it's somebody that's, that's out there today and you're wondering what next. And this is pretty much what that message is going to be. So I want you to get your Bible out with me and I want you to turn to 1 Samuel and we're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. And as you're getting ready and getting your Bible ready, I want to just talk to you about what the Lord has been laying in my heart about not just this season that we're going through, but I want to just, I think right now there are a lot of people that that are, are, are really needing a, a true, fresh word from God. I think the time of uh, performance, people are not looking for a performance. I thought about shooting this on the stage and trying to, you know, trying to preach to an empty auditorium. And I thought, you know, that would just be trying to make something happen or to perform in some kind of way. And that's not who I am. I, I just want to get deep into God's word. And, and I want us to look at some fresh word that God has laid into my spirit. And I believe it's for you today. And if it's not for right now, it will be in the future because God's word doesn't return void. Hopefully you've gotten your Bible out and you're ready with me. I'm going to look at one verse with you right now. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 1. And it reads like this. The Lord said to Samuel... How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? I want you to fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be the king. Now, the Lord laid this scripture in my heart and, uh, and let me give you a little bit of what's happening before this. In chapter 15, this is where King Saul was told by God to wipe out all the Amalekites. And he didn't do it. He didn't obey God. He saved and spared the king, Agag. Uh, he took him alive and hostage. And he also took the best of the sheep and the best of the cattle. And of course, he disobeyed God. He disobeyed his command. And because of that, God rejected him as king. So it's important that we obey God. Because uh, not only does our future, uh, our, our future depend on that, but the blessings of God and our, even our position, wherever we are in life, if we're living in disobedience, there's no way that God can continue to bless us. We're operating against his word. But in chapter 15, uh, Saul decided to go through his own plan. He tried to do things by himself. and You'll always get in trouble when you do that. But because... Saul disobeyed and God rejected him as king. Samuel was very upset about it. He, the Bible says that he began to mourn. He began to grieve. And he mourned and, and he mourned. And it went on for days and days and days that he was, he was so broken about Saul being rejected by God as the king. And the Lord said to him, Saul, you, you can't just stay in this mournful position. You can't just be here and... Uh, and, and be grieving and crying over something that is over. You know, there's some things in our life that might be over that you're still holding on to. And that's what this message is all about. We, we've got to learn when to let go. We've got to know when something is over and when it's over and it's time for us to move forward. God said, Samuel mourned, but he said, it's time for you to stop mourning. It's time for you to move forward. Now, the relationship between Saul and the relationship with Saul and Samuel was more than just a friendship. It wasn't just a casual friendship like we have. This was a prophet and a king. Samuel had anointed him with the, the power of God on his life. God had, God had put his favor on Saul. Saul did some great things for the Lord. But when he started living in disobedience, that's when God pulled his anointing off of him. 
And he was ready to put an anointing on someone else. So after God rejects Saul, and after God says to, to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn over this? When are you going to move on in your life? Maybe God is saying to you right now, maybe he's asking you, how long are you going to mourn over this ex-relationship? How long are you going to mourn and how long are you going to cry over this betrayal of a friend? How long are you going to cry over this job that once existed that, that you got laid off from? How long is it going to be before you get back to normal again? Because I, I think it's important for us to realize that there is a grief time. There's a time for us that's healthy. Even when somebody passes away, for us to to grieve the life of someone. And it's just showing how much we love them. But there's a time that we have to pick up and we've got to move on. You know, there was a lady that used to go to church here in my early ministry. And she and her husband both came to church here. They were wonderful people. And she adored him and he adored her. But one day while he was at work, he had a massive heart attack and he passed away. And that woman never recovered again. She lived the rest of her days on this earth grieving. She literally grieved herself to death. She got to where she wouldn't leave her home. She wouldn't uh, go out. She wouldn't even meet her family. She just, just isolated herself off from the rest of the world. And so God says, you know, there's, there's a time, there's a season for us to, to mourn and for us to go through these things. But, but how long is it going to take you? How long is it going to take you to realize that, that this is over, it's time for you to pick up and to move forward? I'm reminded about Joshua when he was, uh, he was handed over the leadership role of Moses when Moses was leading all the people out of uh, the bondage and out of Egypt and the slavery there. And God had promised them uh, a land that was flowing with milk and honey. It was a, a promised land. This was a land beyond anything they had ever seen before. So God had made this promise, and it's, it's important for us to realize that it's impossible for God to lie. So if God's placed something in your heart, he may have a personal promised land in your heart right now that God has given to you that he hasn't given to me. Maybe God has, has told you in your spirit that he's going to take you in to a, to a, a, a particular relationship in the future, or God's going to take you in to a, to, a, to a specific design thing that he has laid into your heart that's different than what he's given to somebody else. God has given me some promises. He's given me some things that I hold on to dearly in my heart, and I'm looking forward to those things happening. But there's going to be some things and have been some things in my life and in your life that will sort of throw us off the track that God is leading us on. It, it just throws us off and it makes us think, well, what are we going to do now? And so we're tempted to just sit and grieve over those things, to sit and mourn over the what would have been, what should have been, and, and, and what could have been if only. But we can't consider all that. we got to start where we are today. And so God said to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, he says, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now it's time for you to lead these people and cross over the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give to them, to all of the Israelites. So God was saying, Joshua, it's time for you. This is your time to shine. This is your time to rise up and to continue to go into the promise that I have for you. He said, Joshua didn't know what to do. He was, he was concerned that he had never done this before. He had never taken a lead role like this before, but God knew that he could do it. Maybe God's calling you right now to rise up. Maybe something's happened in your family. Maybe you've lost a spouse and you think, how will I survive without this person in my life? How will I go on? Maybe God's calling you to rise up and keep moving into the promise that he swore that he would give you. You know, as we go back to Saul and Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Lord said to him, he said, Samuel, I want you to fill your horn with oil. The first thing he said is, how long will you mourn? I want you to fill your horn with oil. Now, I want to talk about that for just a second because the oil in God's word represents the presence and the power of the Spirit of God on somebody's life. It means that uh, all is sort of a metaphor. It's like a metaphor that represents God's hand on a person's life. And so when I read that, 
this week about filling your horn with oil, I felt like the Lord was saying to me that you need to stay full of my presence. That no matter what goes on in your life, no matter what rejections, losses, whatever has happened in your life, and even what's going on in our world today, even with all the fear that's going on, and even this coronavirus that has gotten so out of hand worldwide, God is calling us to fill our oil. Fill our horn with oil. Get a fresh anointing in your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. God is calling us to do that. The next thing God says is, I have something new for you. So what God was saying is, first of all, he's saying, Samuel, I want you to stop mourning. It's time for that to stop. It's time for you to dry your tears. And it's time for you to rise up, get filled with the Holy Spirit, get filled with my anointing, and move forward because I have a new king. I have chosen a new king. I've chosen a new man to lead my people. Well, it was David. God had sent him to Jesse's house to anoint one of David, uh, one of Jesse's sons. And of course, you know that story about all the brothers that were rejected, but God chose the least of them and chose David. Now, here's the thing. You may say, well, it's not going to be as good as it was before. Maybe Samuel thought, well, I, I loved Saul, and I want him to be the king. And I don't know if I'm going to like David as much as I liked Saul. Maybe you've thought about that. Even Jesus was telling his disciples, and they said about his going away, and his disciples said to him, but Master, you know, if, if you go, we have no reason to live. Why would we, why would we want another comforter? But the Lord said, it is expedient for me to go away so that the comforter may come. And that word expedient means it's a desired promotion. This is a promotion for you. This is not a demotion. It, it's not, God is not going to demote us. God's going to lift us to a new level. And so that's what God was doing through David. He was saying, look, I've got a greater plan. I've got something that's greater than what you think. I know that your ways are a certain way, but my ways are higher than your ways. I have a plan for your life. And while it may not make sense right now, and while you think this is the worst decision, the worst time of my life, I love Saul, I love Jesus, I love, I love what once was, I love that job, I love that man, I love that woman, I love that friend. Well, God's saying, it's over, and it's time for you to move forward. Ironically, when Moses died, God gave the people of Israel 30 days to grieve, one month to grieve before he told them to get up and move on. I think it's God's way of showing us that there are certain things that do break our heart. There are certain things that do come along and it doesn't feel good. It's not supposed to feel good when we lose somebody or when somebody leaves us or hurts us. It's, it's not good. It, it hurts us terribly and it breaks our heart. But it shouldn't break our dream and it shouldn't break us down to where we can't function and live our life. God's saying, I want to do something better than you had before. Maybe you're saying, well, it's not going to be as good as it was before. It's not going to like, be like it was before. Well, you're right. It's not going to be like it was before. It's going to be better than it was before because that's what God does. He considers all this into his plan when God brings the next thing into our life. This coronavirus right now, I understand there are a lot of people that are upset. I mean, there are a lot of people thinking, is this the last days? Is this the coming of the Lord? Is this going to stop soon? I don't know that. I don't know, I don't know exactly what's going on. But I do know that whatever happens, no matter what it is, whatever happens, if God is for us and God is with us, we will come out better than we were before. That's the way that God does it. God takes all things and works those things together for the good of those that love him and who are called according to his purpose. We know that we're going to come out better. We're going to shine better. We're going to be a better church at the end of this. I know a lot of people are stressing out saying, well, what if people fall out of church and what if people do this? No, no, no. We're not going to think like that. We're going to come out stronger. We're going to come out better. We're going to come out closer together because it's not going to be like it was before. It's going to be better. And you can say amen to that right there. You know, the thing is, is I've lost friends in my life. People that I loved, people that I cared deeply for, people that I asked to do things for me, 
that I would have never asked anyone else to do. But just because of certain events and things that happen, we don't, we're not as close as we used to be. And sometimes I've even been betrayed by a friend. I've been stabbed in the back by somebody that I trusted. I've had people that we just sort of fizzled out. We were just the closest of friends, and it just fizzled away. And I could sit and grieve over that, but you know what? God has brought new friends into my life, and I've got to be honest with you. The friends I have today are better than the friends I had of yesterday. They're better. You know, I can, uh, I can look at my life, and I, even in my own life, I lost a job right before I became the pastor of this church. I was working at a company, and, and they laid me off, and I grieved, and I cried, and I felt so rejected. I felt so hurt. I thought, why me? Other people get to keep their job. Why do I have to go? And I thought, it'll never be like it was before, and it wasn't. It was better because God gave me a better job. I love what I do today. And it's all because God gives us better than we had before. I've had other things that have happened to me before that have broken my heart. You know, some of you probably know my story uh, about me losing a wife. And, you know, when I lost her, it devastated my world. It devastated my life. I didn't know how I'd go on as a minister. I didn't know how I'd go on as a father. I didn't know how I'd go on uh, living without someone. I thought that that would wreck my life and my life would be over. But you know what? I'm a better person today than I was then. I feel like I'm a better minister. My ministry is better. Our church is better. My relationship is better. My kids are better. Things in life is better. And the thing is, is that's no offense to anybody in my past. It's just simply the the blessing, the favor of God, not allowing us to stay put and stay in a, in, a, in a low valley for the rest of our life. It's okay to get in the valley as long as you keep moving. David said, even though I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because God is with me in those valleys and I can make it. I, I can keep going through that valley. You know, um, I just want to, I want you to just confess that my life is going to be better than before. My life is better than before. Maybe you look at your situation, what you're going through. I know some people are being laid off right now. I want you to just confess, I'm going to be better than I was before. You know, when I think about all this, we can just sit and we can just mourn and, and we can grieve what used to be, what could have, should have, uh, all of those things. But, you know, if things had worked out a certain way, Satan will drive you crazy with the ifs of life. So let's don't, let's don't get caught up in that. Let's just look to our future. I want you to think about it for a minute. It was Joshua that led God's people into the promised land, not Moses. It was David who became the greatest king of all of Israel. Even to this day, they honor him. The star of David is on Israel's flag. It wasn't Saul. It was David. Saul was grieving something that would have, could have, should have been but God said, how long are you going to mourn about this? I've got a way of working this into my plan. I'm going to use this for me to receive glory. I'm going to show you that in all of this, at the end of it, you're going to shine greater than you, than you shined before. So don't waste precious time. Don't waste precious time thinking about what could have been and I wish it had worked out a certain way and if we had only done this. and You know, those kind of things will drive you crazy and they'll keep you in that rut for years. You know, uh, Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6 says, uh, and I want to read this to you. Uh, it, it's such an interesting little proverb and I think it's so good. A few years ago, I read across this, and it made me think about something that just happened the day before. It says, go to the ant. Consider the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. Study the ant and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, and no ruler, yet it stores and provides for itself in the summertime, and it gathers food for its harvest. You know, where I used to live, we had a problem with anthills, and anthills would build up. Maybe that happens on your property sometimes. And, 
And uh, we have a daughter that's very allergic to ant bites. And so I was just trying to kill a lot of those ant hills and trying to do, do away with them. And uh, one day I, I just walked out and there was one that was starting to form. And it had, it had gotten about this high. And I just took my foot and I raked across it and just scattered it. And, and the ground was level. The next day I get up to my surprise when I'm going to work. And this colony had built this structure back up exactly the way it was. It looked like it was completely undisturbed. I started studying the ant. I started realizing that there these pheromones and, and these signals that they gave to each other, their chemical signals through their saliva, and they would send these signals to each other. Each one of these ants in these colonies have specific jobs to do. When the, when, uh, the Ant Hill was disturbed, there are builders. There are those that uh, hunt for food. There are those in that colony that search for water. There are protectors. There are those that go out and sting uh, when you disturb. They, they, they attack ants, so to say. So, But something I noticed about it is that they immediately went in to work. They didn't sit around and say, oh, somebody's disturbed our house. They're not sitting on the sidewalk and crying. All these ants just sitting around wondering what they're going to do and, and when it, why did somebody hurt us? Why would somebody do this to us? They immediately went in to rebuilding. And I want you to know that similar to that, I believe that God is sending signals to us to rebuild. God is sending signals to us to rise up that you can't help what's been done to you, who hurt your feelings, who walked away from you. You can't help what happened in your ex-relationship or how you got hurt in that old church. You can't help all that stuff. God is sending a signal, just like those ants have these signals. The Holy Spirit is sending a signal to you and he's saying, rise up and be the church. Rise up and be my man of God, my woman of God, my teenager, and forget about the things that are behind you and press toward the things that are in front of you and learn to let go. Learn to let it go. You know, if God can program an ant like that, he can surely, he surely programmed us to hear his word and to hear the signals that he sends to us from heaven. The thing I want you to understand as I close this down today, I want you to understand that God doesn't waste what you go through. Everything that you've gone through, it may not have been God's will for you to go through it, but God can use it. And God can take what, is, what he's allowed to happen in your life and use it for his glory. And in the end of it, you're going to be better than you were before. So I want you to understand today, I love you with all my heart. I don't want you to grieve. And the Lord doesn't want you to grieve. God doesn't want you to sit around and cry over previous things that have gone bad. I want you to rise up, shake it off of you today, and I want you to realize that God is saying to you, fill your horn with oil. Fill your life up with the power of my Holy Spirit. Rise up. I'm going to bring you to your desired promotion. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to bring you out better than you were before. The things that I have planned for you, I've woven them in. All the problems, all the hurts, the heartaches, the betrayals, the, the, all of those things. The, uh, the infidelity, all those things. God has brought all that together into his plan and he weaves it in to make you better than you were before. You wait and see. If God, if you'll look back over your life, you'll see several places in your life that had it not been for some of those things, you wouldn't be the person you are today. And so I'm thankful today for the things that I've gone through. I wouldn't want to go through them again for any reason. I've had people leave my church before and I've cried over it and I've wondered, well, why did that happen? And God gave me better people, better workers. We're a better church. God has, you know, led staff members away and sometimes that hurts and it's painful and you think, you know, how will we go on? What will we do without this staff person? Uh, we were, you know, we were working together so good, but sometimes God leads a person on and you know what happens? God sends us a better staff person. That person does great uh, with us and it's all part of God's plan. You know, I, I had something that happened to me in my life that it really broke broke me down. It broke my heart and I grieved and I cried really for years. I would have tears in my eyes and my heart would just feel so heavy and it was about a relationship that I had with some people in my family. 
we had about a 30-year relationship. Every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, birthdays, holidays, all of those things, funerals, all those things that families do together. Today, there have been things that have happened and things that have been said and I've worked and I've tried and I've cried and I've called and I've done everything that I physically can do. And I just got to the place where God said, how long are you going to mourn over something that's over? And so I have just released myself from it completely, entirely. And I've picked up and I've moved forward. I hate what happened. I, it wasn't my fault of what happened. I'm not blaming anyone, but it's just things happen in life. And you may think, well, you're a preacher. Well, if you only knew my story, if you knew the things that I've gone through, I go through things too. But there was a time in my life that I had to let go. And I want you to understand today that if you will let go, God will make your life better than it was before. I want you to receive that today in the name of Jesus. Let me pray with you right now. Bow your head with me and let's ask God to help us let go. Father, today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. Lord, that you have shown us today. I thank you, God, that you have allowed me to speak to these people right in their homes people that are going through hardships, people that are going through times in their life and, and they're grieving, they're crying, and uh, it's family, it's friends and jobs and all these things and even health and exes and betrayals and infidelity and all those things that are worked in that make us feel rejected and like life will never be the same again. Well, life won't be the same again. We're declaring today that life is going to be better than it was before. And God, today we receive that in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak life over over this, uh, this group of people, over Florence first, and those that might be joining in this broadcast today, Lord, bless them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, even after all of the smoke clears from this virus, Lord, let us let all of our churches, Lord, all the churches in, in the world that proclaim the life of Jesus and, and the life that Jesus brings us, let us all come out stronger than we were before. Lord, let us come out better people than we were before. Use all of this for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Church, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I know it's a little different, but this is the way we're going to do church for a little while, so we've got to do what we've got to do. And I want you to stay encouraged. Don't live in fear. Keep going. Keep moving in your life. Take those precautions you need to take, but stay encouraged. Keep that smile on your face. Be laughing. Watch, la watch movies that perk you up. Stay happy. Keep your home filled with joy and definitely pray together as a family. I love you. The next opportunity that we'll meet is we'll meet Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Share this with somebody today. Hit the share button, make a comment, let me know uh, how th this affected your life and how it spoke to you. Maybe say something about our church and hit the share button. Let's let other people know that, that this can bless their life too. Join us Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. And by the way, one last announcement. Our Passion Play, of course, has been rescheduled. So we're re, re uh, scheduling that to a little further down the road. We don't have any dates yet. We don't have any idea, but we're going to postpone that for now, of course. There's nothing we can do. Uh, but stay tuned. God bless you. Stay encouraged. I love you. I'll see you Sunday. Sunday.